It's been a little while. Uh, Kirk tells me it's actually been three weeks now that I've been using this device right here. That is, of course, the Galaxy S10. I mean, I've just been living with this phone. This has been my phone. Has the SIM card in it. I took photos. I lived life. I sent tweets, WhatsApp, Slack, email, whatever other app. This was my smartphone of choice for the last three weeks. I have some feelings about it that I think you need to know about. There's some things I like. There's some things I don't like any smartphone out there. I chose to use the standard Galaxy S10, not the S10 Plus. I just feel like this is a nice form factor. I kind of like the circular cutout as opposed to the larger one. I mean, look, it's your choice. You want the bigger display, you go for the plus. Otherwise, they're basically the same. First things first, what are you looking at? What greets you when you unlock this phone? It's the display. I mean, that's gonna satisfy anyone in the smartphone universe. Anyone in the segment, any fan that's out there, you, your nephew, your aunt, your uncle. If you want maybe the best display in the smartphone game, then you go with this phone. I mean, that's pretty standard stuff. You already knew it. I have a case on this phone, so it kind of diminishes the edge a little bit. After all, you know, Samsung has been curving these edges for a while now. Some people love it, some people less so. Actually, I really like this case. I forget the name of it. Got it off Amazon. Genuine leather. <sighs> Yeehaw, ladies and gentlemen. That's rawhide, Willie Do. Another big change. For this particular model year, we now have more cameras than ever. That's correct. That's three lenses on the back. Of course, you're getting a wider angle view with these. I used it. I used that feature. I love that feature. In fact, the front facing camera on this device is wider than I expected as well. So it's versatile. You can get a lot of shots. Of course, the camera itself, incredible in a number of different circumstances with or without the wide. Uh, it's one of the best performers out there that I've used recently. I wouldn't put it quite at pixel level just because of the software, the, the isolation, the portrait effect, and so on. Not that I use that very much. I mean, for me, this camera, it's an easy pick, kind of like the display. Again, not much of a surprise here in Samsung's flagship device. You recall that this one features wireless charging, also wireless charge sharing. I'm a big fan of that. That's a cool feature to have. Now, normally I'd say that's just a novelty. You're not gonna use it very often, but in conjunction with the Galaxy Buds, this could be a feature that you use on a frequent basis if you choose those earbuds to go with this phone. While we're on the outside uh, surroundings of the device here, I should also talk about this button over here. That's the Bixby button. I'm not a fan of Bixby myself. I'm never gonna use it. It has recently become remappable. So you can switch it to something else other than a Bixby launcher. That said, it will still launch Bixby on a long press. You can't, you just can't completely get rid of Bixby. There's always some sort of hook, some sort of compromise. So Bixby is still there, but the button is a little easier to live with considering the fact that you can at least remap the single press for uh, whatever app launch you want to have happen. The headphone jack, that's right. The S10 maintains the headphone jack. Talked about it in the unboxing video. This thing is useful and it's tiny. It's a tiny little piece to add to the motherboard of the device and so do it. I mean, you have a big phone anyway. I, I like it, I like having it there. Okay, now what about the speaker on par sort of with, with many of the other flagships that are out there? I'll give you a quick demo here. We'll boost this up. I mean, what can I say? Like, I don't know if it's the best that I've tested. There have been some loud ones come through here, but this is clear. Uh, you're gonna be satisfied with it as far as I'm concerned. Now, another thing, a lot of questions about this, the, 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 the circular cutout, the pinhole, hole punch. A lot of people asking me, like, how much is that affecting you? Are you a fan of it? How does it compare to the notch? I prefer it, to be honest. If you're gonna give me this or a notch, I'll take this. Now granted, I do feel the need to say like when it comes to face unlock, for example, there's way less tech in here than in the iPhone notch on the iPhone 10, 10S. You can't really compare them one to one. This is less secure for face unlock. But again, I'm not using face unlock anymore. So you decide how big of a deal that is to you. But this is just taking up so much less space than the average notch. 
And then on top of that, by pushing it over in the corner, for whatever reason, it just feels less abrasive to your day-to-day -day functionality. Like, I mean, you see it there, it's, it's big, but your eyes are kind of used to seeing stuff up in this corner anyways, with the battery indicator and the Wi-Fi connection and so on and whatever other notification indicators you have up there. So you're kind of pre-programmed to expect stuff up in the corner. And maybe that has something to do with why this is less offensive, not just for me, but a lot of other people have said the same thing. I'm taking this over the notch any day of the week. I guess I'm a hole punch fan. Didn't expect it, but I guess so. You saw my video previously on the face unlock being really easy to crack. I'm fully on the fingerprint train now. Everybody has an opinion about this fingerprint. You see all the comments, people are like, you're holding it too long. Uh, look, we shouldn't have to have a conversation about how to use a fingerprint. People are gonna pick it up, they're gonna put their finger on it. That's regular human being behavior going on. Depending on conditions, it just, it doesn't work 100% of the time. Still not as rock solid as a phone with a rear capacitive fingerprint scanner. This is the future, this is what we're living with. It's a screen unlock. I mean, it's cool, it's magical. That said, was the fingerprint scanner in the back really that offensive? You know, if there was something sitting right over here? I don't know, you tell me. Okay, battery life on this device has been amazing. There's never been a day where I had to recharge before the evening. I've been really impressed by that. Performance is the same thing. It's super snappy as expected. Uh, everything is moving beautifully. I mean, it's the latest flagship specs. I turned off Bixby from the left swipe. So now I guess I got nothing going on. I'm a one page kind of guy, at least with this current setup right here. I got the dark mode turned on. I adapted quite nicely to the One UI, Samsung's latest skin, which is like not even offensive anymore. So I'm a fan of that. Of course I had to change the buttons, the nav buttons on the bottom to be the right way. Samsung, give it out of the box, please. It's about time, all right? Let's get it together. There it is, I mean, it's solid. It's a good time. It charges wireless or charges quick over USB type C. One of the best displays in the game, one of the best cameras in the game with the versatility of the wide angle. It's kind of exactly what you expect it to be. It's as good as you expect it to be. So of course, at this point, the conversation just comes down to cost. The idea of the flagship price tag is just not that I'm not excited about, not that I won't use it, but like I just feel the need, I feel the responsibility to let you know that when you're going premium right now, it's not like an equivalent exchange of value. Like you're not paying two or 300 more and necessarily getting two or 300 back in terms of value. I just came off the OnePlus 6T, for example, and it didn't really change my daily life with the exception probably of wireless charging and maybe being bothered a bit less by the location of the cutout. If you feel like you want this phone, just understand why you're buying it. You're kind of in the same territory as an iPhone buyer just on the Android side. That's really what this is. It's like an iPhone for Android users. Because if I'm in the OnePlus department, I can get two of those almost for the price of this. I can get a new one for two years or every year and a half or something like that instead of having this product right here. Budget is a big factor in whether or not this is a good decision for you. If you got a lot of budget, I say go for it. You will love this phone. I'm enjoying using this phone. Now there is a question about whether or not this S10 is the S10 to get. Some people have made the case that the S10e is actually the value point. They might be right. I, I mean, it definitely gets closer to some of those competitive products at the five, $600 price point. It's in a weird space. It's not really premium. It's not really budget. It's not really mid range. Maybe I'll switch to that one next from this. I think this experience straight into the S10e experience will give me a nice one, two punch of like, did I notice the difference? Was I impacted in a big way? Do I feel like I'm missing something? Maybe that's the next phone for me nonetheless. You will be happy with this if you can pay the price, if you can foot the bill. That's the Galaxy S10. It's been like three weeks and I don't think you'll be disappointed if you buy it, but your wallet definitely will. This episode is brought to you by Artlist. We've been subscribed to the service for the past three years and we think it's the best music licensing service out there. Music comes from real indie artists and the tracks are all bangers. Come check it out. This track's my favorite. So 
So if you subscribe right now, you get two months for free and you can download all the music that you want for whatever project that you want. Check out the link below.